A principal component of successful pork production is the health of the pigs. This section will look at four areas pertaining to health, biosecurity, immunity, health-related procedures, and disease surveillance. A farm, like a castle, is designed to protect those on the inside. The biosecurity of a farm can be compared to a castle where security was based on its location. Having an excellent field of view and defensive protection, tall and strong walls, several defensive layers, and having limited entry points. In addition to the design, internal defenses are important to maintaining a high level of biosecurity and disease prevention. The goal of biosecurity is to not let anything new into our castle and to not send any health issues out from it. Location is a key factor in biosecurity. While farms generally don't have towers, they do have several defensive layers to guard against pathogens. To be effective, a strong defense needs knowledgeable and trained defenders who know what to do to protect from outside threats. Common biosecurity measures or defensive layers at the farm are downtime or the time since contact with other pigs, a disinfection chamber for things entering the farm, and a clear process for entering that reduces the chance for disease to enter with people entering the farm. A typical process requires shoes to be removed and left outside of the changing area, removing all clothes and jewelry prior to taking a shower and putting on internal farm clothing and boots prior to contact with pigs in the farm. Reversing the process on the way out of the farm helps ensure that any pathogens in the farm stay in the farm. A study done in Europe highlights some of the more common errors in biosecurity when entering farms. Human error plays a huge role in allowing pathogens into a farm. It is extremely important that the plan for entering and leaving a farm is followed. In the survey, the most common errors centered around failure to respect the separation between the designated clean and dirty areas. Starting off with healthy weaned pigs is important. The correct steps must be taken to ensure that their health isn't put at risk during the movement from the sow farm to the nursery or wean to finish site. Thorough cleaning and disinfection of the trucks, loading chutes, and the farm is vital to receiving healthy pigs. Correctly implemented biosecurity measures are to protect the pigs coming into the farm and help to guard their health once there. Time for a little participation. Can you identify the risks? A. Introducing pathogens into the barn. B. Snakes or bugs can be inside of boots. C. Boots can be wet inside. D. All of the above. The answer is D. All of the above. Are pets, rodents, and wildlife a potential problem? Is their presence a biosecurity risk? Yes, pets, rodents, and wildlife can be a problem and they definitely represent the biosecurity risk. Up to now, the focus has been on preventing diseases from getting into the farm through biosecurity measures. In spite of the best efforts, sometimes diseases get past the defensive layers and into a farm. When this happens, the last line of defense is the pig's immunity or ability to fight off the disease challenge. The ability to ward off a disease challenge is dependent on both the quantity and the quality of the pig's immune response. The quantity and quality of the immune response is built and supported by three components. Colostrum intake of the piglet in farrowing, 
both the quality of the colostrum and the amount consumed are important. Correct vaccination procedures and by timely treatments of pigs that need additional support to fend off the illness. To support the health of the pigs at the farm level, these are the five areas to focus on. First, ensure biosecurity. Second, timely identification of sick pigs. Third, treat pigs based on established procedures. Fourth, record any new sick pigs detected and biosecurity risks or threats. And finally, fifth, regular communication with the veterinarian or supervision. Early identification of fall behind and sick pigs is an important part of good animal husbandry. It takes time to learn what to look for and recognize issues in their early stages. If you don't realize there is a problem, then you can't do anything to fix it. Treatment is farm and or company specific and will depend on multiple factors. Diarrhea or scours is more commonly found in younger pigs but can occur throughout the growing cycle. In its early stages, it may be hard to identify which pig is scouring. There are a number of causes that range from infections to barn environment to nutrition. Respiratory problems have a variety of symptoms and are often hard to detect during their early stages. Be alert for coughing as an early indicator and seek help if you suspect a problem. Pale and unthrifty pigs with rough hair and abdominal breathing are more advanced signs of a problem and by the time those signs are evident, successful treatment is much more difficult. Strep is a common bacterial disease that is generally associated with stress from overcrowding, poor ventilation, high humidity, and poor sanitation. It can also be triggered by other primary diseases. It affects the nervous system and can also cause lameness and respiratory problems. The most common symptom is side paddling or swimming. It often progresses very quickly, so recognizing the signs and early intervention are important for control. Lameness problems can be found in all pig populations. Stiffness, walking difficulties, swollen joints, and injured or damaged toes are common signs. There are a variety of bacteria associated with lameness. It can also be caused by trauma, infection from a tail bite, and poor nutrition. Greasy pig gets its name from the oily or greasy appearance of the skin of infected pigs. It is a bacterial infection more commonly seen in farms with a high percentage of gilts in the herd, but is present at some level in most systems. Damage to the skin from fighting, rough floors, etc. provides an entry point for the bacteria. Early detection and treatment are important in keeping it under control. Treatment will depend on severity and company protocols. Animal behavior problems such as tail and flank biting are generally triggered by a combination of factors rather than a single cause. Once started, behavior problems are difficult to stop. Ensuring correct ventilation, feed and water availability, and other environmental factors is key to reducing the incidence of vices. A hematoma is swelling beneath the skin due to ruptured blood vessels. Swollen ears are generally caused by incorrect handling such as lifting or pulling a pig by its ears or from pigs fighting. Which pig should get extra care? Pig B. Which pigs have a scour problem? The correct answer is E. All of these pigs are showing signs of scours. 
What is the correct procedure? A. Treatment and movement to hospital pen. B. Only treatment. C. Only movement to hospital pen. D. Wait for improvement. E. If it is just one case, it isn't a problem. The correct answer is treatment and move to a hospital pen. So the correct answer is A. When dealing with sick or injured pigs, treatment success is strongly connected to quickly and correctly identifying challenged pigs and providing a suitable treatment. Zoetis developed a three-level classification system for sick pigs. A pigs may look generally healthy, but are showing some signs of illness or distress. When identified at this stage and properly treated, there is a high probability of treatment success. B pigs are easier to identify since they are showing more signs, but are less likely to fully recover and tend to need more time and attention than A pigs during the treatment phase. C pigs are easily identified, require more care, and are less likely to recover than both A and B pigs. It is important to remember that all three groups start out as healthy pigs. The key is in how quickly they are identified and given proper care. It is more important to recognize that there is a problem than to know what needs to be done to correct it. Supervisors and support veterinarians can provide guidance on care. Farms don't generally have watchtowers, but they do depend on the vigilance of everyone in the farm to follow the biosecurity procedures and to be on the lookout for signs of health challenges. The three main takeaways are first, biosecurity is key to safeguarding the farm health status. Second, both treatments and vaccines correctly and timely applied are important tools to support the immune system of pigs to meet the challenges of disease, allowing nutrients consumed to be used for growth rather than fighting disease. And third, Recording treatments and reporting biosecurity issues are important tools that help safeguard farm health status. This is a partial list of additional wean to finish resources available from PIC. For more information, visit our website www.pic.com. The recommendations presented in this video are general in nature and are not meant to replace established farm protocols. Each farm should have procedures in place that have been approved by their wean to finish manager. As always, thanks for watching.